dying and his disciples are panicking and saying we are going to die what does Jesus say to the water be still is peace peace means I'm giving you the other translation of it peace means be still and know be what when early Christians used to die okay when they were when they were sleeping the Christian would say rest in peace the world makes it sound like a horror word R.I.P. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. rest in peace ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is not a bad thing actually for us as Christians we rest in peace while we're breathing in and out okay now what I'm here to do, to do today is to teach you how to rest in peace. And then I will operate in my office, which is the op office of a prophet. We do prophetic things. Now, first, before I even forget this, there's, there are those of you who have been going through a situation of you don't know which direction to take in terms of career. I'm talking to the school going. You don't know which direction to take in your career. You don't know which course to do. You're still torn in between. You don't know what the future holds. Let me tell you this and let it settle the matter. Focus a lot on learning new languages. The future is in many languages. You forget you are... There are some courses which I'm hearing, I'm hearing these days are expired. Well, but I hope I'm speaking to somebody here today. If you have a choice and an option for languages, go for go for languages here and those abroad. That's the word that was on my heart as I was coming here and I said, I, this one I have to offload before I even go any further. <laughs> Amen? So we're going to go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. I prepared a sermon but when the unction of the Holy Spirit takes over, you go with the flow. So he's taken me to Hebrews. Hebrews 4. Um, ah, oh. Amen. Let me just stand over there so I can read from the screen as well. I'd like to read it because the phone may not. So can we read together? Is it okay? One, two, three, let's go. Let Let's eh? Eh? Let us therefore what? Lest a promise of mm. okay, that's KJV. Can we try another version just to, to break it down? Because I know how KJV sometimes when people hear ye, ye, thou, amplified. Okay, let's take it from there. Are we together? Let's go. Stop. We are going to start reading the word of God the way it should be read. Okay? Well, for those of you who are not Bible readers now, today I'm going to teach you how to read the word so that it enters you. So that it, it sticks. So that it does what? It sticks. Learn to read it like you're eating food with a toothpick. With a what? Pick one thing at a time. Okay? We're going to pick one thing at a time. If you read it like this, the Bible will be the most boring history book you ever read. But it's not a history book. This is how we pick life out of these words. These words want them to come off the pages and enter you and become life and you breathe and move and live. By whom we what? Move and live and have our what? It starts like this. Let's do the truth speak. Okay. We'll go up to where the first comma is. Right? Okay. Number one. Hey, that's number one. Therefore what? Where was he coming from? So like he's saying, after what he has said previously, this is the conclusion of the matter. Therefore, that is already a whole statement on its own, comma. This is the, the point from what we are, he was saying previously, what he was explaining in the previous chapter, Hebrews 3. Let's go. While, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today. <laughs> it is offered when? So this is not a history book. Because it is offered when? Even yesterday it was available, right? But it's still available when? It's available when? So I can enter his rest when? To speak number three.
kaja kuoma. Let's go. Okay. Let us Let us be afraid. Okay? Pick it. I'm coming back to it. Uh-huh. Let's continue. We may think it was for those people then and it does not apply to us. I says, no, you relax. You are not late. You're not late. You can enter it. But he's, he is very concerned. He's saying, you may enter church. You may enter the body of Christ and you miss it. You can easily be in church, around church and still not be receiving what your promises are, your inheritance. You are, you are moving around the gates. Have you ever seen people who just, you know, uh, they are around their classroom but never enter the class? They are all, when they are waiting for break time, that's the most important thing. After break time, they are waiting until the teacher first shows up. They are waiting outside and, you know, so like, this is not what we are called for. For us, we are called to partake, to take. Amen? So it is not too late for us to, to do what? While the promise of entering his rest still holds, let me now paraphrase it for you, that when you're still breathing in and out, when you still have this opportunity to make a decision of entering his rest, remember you're already born again. This is, this is written to believers. You're already born again. But you have not yet entered this rest. You're still struggling to get school fees. You're still struggling to get, you know, you're still, uh, people are still mocking you and disturbing you and making your life hard. You're, you're going through hardships and yet you have been promised. You have everything in heavenly places. You've been given, you're the righteousness of God. You have, you read all these promises and you say, Nihinga, I'm not seeing these things in my life. There is, it's a bit like a curtain. Tell your neighbor, Shema. It's a bit like a curtain. You can easily be walking around here, but you have to be walking around here. I'm going to use this illustration. You have to be walking around here so that that moment when it comes and an angel of the Lord opens for you and says, here, say, Whoo, over here. Amen? Amen? But you have to be around where? Be around the doors. Seek. Seek. And you will find. Knock. It's somewhere around here. Ask, knock, be around the word of God. Be around. Because eventually when you become persistent like that persistent woman in Luke, <laughs> eventually they, they'll just be like, that one is a real seeker. He's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Open that door. As you're moving like, hey, Bridjo, this was a, a lock. You guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. While the promise of entering his rest still holds, while it's still available, when, when your body is put, you, 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 you've missed it. You're like, we'll be in heaven celebrating with you, yes, but we'll be telling you, you lived a harder life, eh? Nee. Fine, you've made it to heaven, eh? Hey, man, you struggled. <laughs> Things are happening to us. Things are happening to us. Let me tell you what it means to enter God's rest. When you, obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. But when you enter God's rest, the finished work of Christ, there are things that happen to you automatically. You don't ask for them. You don't pray for them. They just happen to you by default. You think you have, if you're the president's child, you ask for bodyguards? You're just invited when it's lunchtime, right? They remind you, oh, by the way, have you eaten? Oh, oh. I wasn't even thinking about it. You're reminded your royalty, your royal priesthood, the peculiar nation. There's something about you that is different. You can't live like ordinary men. You have to quickly find in your life, find in your life. Paul was pleading with the church. He says, please, please, find while you're still, while you're still, while, while. Oh, or you, or you change this. Okay. Um, let's go back to Hebrews 4, sorry. Again, this still qualifies what we are saying. Praise the Lord. So this rest is very important. Now, I started to learn that there's a place in God called rest. When Jesus came to show us the way, tell your neighbor the way of the Lord. When Jesus came to show the way, he was doing things to give hints to the people who are watching him of who he was without saying 
Do you notice that Jesus stubbornly healed on the Sabbath? I'll say stubbornly because somehow it happened on the Sabbath. A crippled man says, get up and walk. And then the Pharisees sing, mm, this guy, because they're full of the word. Do you know I have a PhD in Bibliology and Christ, whatever, you, you know, theology. Do you know that in the master's class, they told us you cannot heal on that. You cannot, because the law of Moses is very clear. Moses said, you know, we have those people as well. It's like, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Jesus, you don't eat with your left hand. You have to wash your right hands before you eat because the food you're eating is not going to be sanctified. Jesus, you, they call the son of God. You're, you're, you're not waiting. This is the guy you said, son of God. Really? You guys. Like, really? So like, anyway, let's go to the synagogue because uh, uh, oh, wait. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, synagogue. Hello, hello, how are you? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus shows up and he's living a very ordinary life with the basic man who he had come for. And they had a problem with that. Hello? So Jesus liked to disturb them as well. <laughs> he said, let's see your theology. Uh, which is easier, to, say a man, to tell a man, get up and walk, or say, which is easier? And he disturbed them. He was basically telling them, listen, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. <clears throat> I am not a day. I am the rest. I am the one you observe. I was there from the foundations of the earth. I was there from the foundations of the earth. And on the seventh day, I, after all creation was done, I rested. We are going to go. This Jesus man, we need to meet. Ama, you come. We need to talk to a few security guys. At your guy, or you do my new guy, but solo guy, no guy to money. They have to, they have to, they have to get that guy, and you know, like at here, because man, this guy is overdoing it. If he continues like this, these numbers are too many. He's multiplying every day. We have a problem. Eh? But anyway, you you go, you go to Kalore, look for some guys. Eh? I'm sorting. I'm sorting. Okay. Yeah, look for guys. Amen. Amen. Come on, I'm checking on you next week. You come and tell us to Funeo Mulala Nach Sobole. Okay, you hold on right there. So, like, oh, Master, <laughs> Master, <laughs> Master. Uh, well, we. Who is right? I mean, people say we should pay taxes to. Uh, should pay taxes to Caesar. And some say your disciples say, no, and we are not even sure. We are there. They are trying to set up for the other bouncers to fault find. Fault find. And. And Jesus knowing because he had a very prophetic spirit in him and he knew he was discerning. He saw he had the question before they even asked the question. So he was dealing with them in the case of, I wish you know who you are talking to. I am the scriptures. I am what the scriptures say. The world is created by what I said. But because of my humility, I will not show you who I am. Because you, if I open your eyes to see who I am, you will change and you will interfere with the mission I'm on right now to save mankind. So just stay in your blindness. So like, hmm, I'll leave you. Let me leave you in your ignorance. Let me leave you in your ignorance. Hello? So he introduces himself as the Lord of the Sabbath. Now there's something I want to share with you that's very deep. When God created, in, in, when you read Genesis, some people do not even see where Jesus is in Genesis. But let me help you. And I'm not going to go into, into the detail of the scripture. But I'll, when, you can, when you go back, you take notes and just follow up, okay? All right. So who is the word of God? The word of God is Christ Jesus. Talk to me. The word of God is Christ. Who is the word of God? So when God was creating, the father had a thought. But he had to say these words. And then the things were made. The Father, from the depths of Him, and God said, "Who is said?" When Jesus, when John is introducing Jesus, and he talks about Him, and he says He was with God in the beginning. Read, uh, put for me John one one. In the beginning was what? The Word was with, and the Word is.
So he says, let there be, let me tell you something, in case you did not know. These guys were talking about Jesus. They did not know it was God, the very creator that was dealing with them in human flesh because he came on earth for a mission. When he created the world on the seventh day, he rests. When he rested, man had one problem. The free will that he had been given, the free will that man had been given was abused and it corrupted what the intention and purpose of man was. And the only way, because God is, God is so, 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 so strong-willed and has great integrity with his word that he will, not, he will not bypass it. If he has said you are blessed, he cannot undo it. If he blesses you, no man can undo it. So if he says the earth belongs to man, for him to himself to come onto the earth, he had to be entered in the body of a man. Because he cannot change. He's not a man to change. Neither is he born of man that he will lie. That is God. We know that about him, right? So, after he created the world, he rested. Now, there's a bit of creation people miss. On the sixth day, he created what? On the sixth day, he created man, isn't it? We know that from our from Sunday school. On the first day, the second day, on the sixth day, he created man. But that man that was created was not the man that we are here. That man is created in chapter 2. The one that is picked from the dust. The one that he forms. And puts life into. That's, that man was made from the earth. But that is chapter what? Chapter 1 was man. Male and female he created them. You can check Genesis 1, 20, 1 26. Yeah, 26 and, uh, to 27, 28. So he gave them instructions to be fruitful and multiply. Why am I explaining this to you? I want to show you so you have a better understanding and the devil will not fool you or trick you into anything. You will understand who you have believed and your identity. Because once you know your identity, you will rest. You will only rest if you know what you, who you are and what has been given unto you. Are we together? Ah, there he formed. Now, because this man was made out of dust, are you formed out of dust, huh? Chapter 2, are we together? When man falls, when man falls, the punishments and the curses begin. Starts, da, you. You know in punishing, <laughs> he went step by step. Can we go to, uh, chapter 3 is where the, the, the curses begin, right? Genesis 3, the fall of man. Turn to your neighbor, Sashema. Uh, this is we're familiar with this story what I want to first track us to is where when he is giving punishment for the fall he tells the woman that she's going to be laboring uh, in child childbearing and because he had created man in his image the purpose of the Godhead was to create man in their image. And nothing was supposed to corrupt that. Are we together? Nothing was supposed to corrupt it. Creates us in his image. Now, man with this new body he gets in chapter 2. Because now they, are, they developed the sense they could touch trees, feel apples, you know, all those things. Hey. he falls instead of God cursing the man who had committed the sin it's like no he cannot curse who he has already blessed he is, I've already blessed man I've already, I've already told you that you are created in my image and you're going to be fruitful and multiply that's an instruction on your, on your kind and category to be fruitful and multiply what did God do he cursed the, the ground the earth gets the curse because that's where chapter 2 comes from. And even when he's punishing the serpent, in punishing the serpent, he allows him to eat the dust. That's why there's disease and corruption. Your, your body gets sick, but your soul, your spirit is not sick. Your spirit is okay, but you can get the symptoms on your body. Because your, this, this soil, this soil here, in different colors, some is white, some is brown, some is dark brown, some is white. It's just like, like what we see. 
were not different from the hills and and valleys. Some of you are made from 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 the swamp, others from the mountains. <laughs> eh? So the clay is different. You know? But you're all clay. You're all dust. So I I want you to move to to, to that uh, scripture. It's it's right um, again follows over there where he curses the earth. Why? Because he could not reverse, he could not undo. Now, this is God who had already rested on the seventh day. This is beyond the seventh day that this man of the dust is made. So, the work, and re the work of salvation and redemption comes, comes to restore man to what the original order was. You were created in the image of God. So, there has to be a redemption. Someone has to go down there and help that guy. But otherwise, the dust on him is going to be eaten. That's the reason why whenever people died after this curse and fall, the devil always fought for their bodies. Always fought for their bodies. Are you still with me? You know the scripture that says that uh, the devil wanted to steal Moses' body. Yeah? And the angel, was it Michael? Archangel Michael fought off the devil because this man was an oracle of God. But there was one body the devil had a problem with. Said, yes, since you had been given permission to bite the dust, are we still together? The redemption plan, the super plan God had was to bring somebody who had the DNA of God, not corrupted at all, just the seed, which is the word. And this one had to die by bleeding, by bleeding. He had to bleed. Why? Because the Bible says the life of a creature is in its what? Uh -huh. So the devil was always anxious waiting to steal a body, steal a body until they gave me the what? They said, I'll bite the dust. 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 Life of a creature is in, I'll bite the dust. Even the, the secular people have songs, no one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust, meaning you, you, you can Google the song, it's there. Another one bites the dust, something like that. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Jesus had a mega plan. God had a super plan. His super plan was, hold on, we know what we're going to do. Jesus, yeah, you have to bleed. You have to bleed. And your body has to be covered with the DNA of God, the blood of God that flows in you because he was not born of man. He was, he, he, his, his father was not man. <laughs> from, from the earth, <laughs> from the dust, he was man. From <laughs> so he's born from... So, so and, and he was received into Mary's womb by a word, by a word. So the word had to be spoken. An angel of God, Gabriel, who carries that VIP information for the people and athletes, VIP comes to Mary and says, Mary, blessed are you among women. And speaks the word. When she receives the word, she receives the word. She gets the seed of the word in her tummy. And that word is what was born. This is what was born. So the devil didn't understand the plan what was going on. He just hears there's a king born, there's a king born. He's following this guy. What is this guy? What is this guy? It's like Herod tried. All these people tried. They're looking for this newborn child. Tell me so that we can come and worship him. When he failed on that one, he said, okay, all fast bones. Born in the last two years because he had failed. Imagine he was searching for two years. Anybody below two years, Tema. They killed, but luckily the angel of God had already told them to go to Egypt. Okay? So the game plan continues. And there's a point where Jesus goes quiet because he had to live as a man. He cannot be an advocate for man if he had not lived as a man. So his witness from the 12 year old up to when he comes out 30 was him living as a man. Tempted in everything. Amen? Let me take you back to the blood. So this one who bites the dust kept biting dust, kept biting dust, kept biting dust and there is one who was being prepared in the garden of Gethsemane. He's like, hold on. This mission is going to be a very hard one, but I'm saving and redeeming the whole mankind because I have to complete what we started in creation. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. So this process has to be completed. And this starts, and he's sweating blood, and he's sweating blood, and his body's being covered by the blood. And even as he's taken away, these soldiers are beating him. They put a crown of thorns on him and hit him because his whole body had to be covered in his blood. Jesus had to be covered in his own blood first before it could cover you. In his own blood. So he gets his blood over him. His blood over him. Blood over him. Blood over him. 
the blood of Jesus and he kept bleeding and he was bleeding and he was bleeding and he's going to Calvary. Let me quicken you something that happened at the cross. Do you know, soldiers are the most, sorry if there are any soldiers here, please forgive me, but soldiers live a very promiscuous life. Eh? When they, especially when they go into war zones, they look for bars and then, you know, they look for women who are, you know, trading and things like that. So most of them usually carry a lot of STIs. Yeah? Now, amongst the packages Jesus was getting, were people beating him. The Bible says he was being mocked. They pulled his beard. They did what? Do you know, do you know you can, there are some STDs which can be transmitted by somebody spitting on you. So Jesus didn't have to sleep with anybody, but all those who are loaded on him, they spat on him. They did because he's carrying your disease. He's carrying all these things. He needs to take these things with him to the cross. You remember? He has to carry these things with him to the cross. So they put all this. This is the process of him carrying all your sins. They're doing this. They're doing this. He moves, gets to the cross. And as he gets to the cross, I'm taking you through this cross message so you understand very well where we are and who you are. And then you enter his rest. He's on the cross. He's nailed. He has somebody on his left hand and he has somebody on his right hand. He has the Old Testament and the New Testament right next to him. The Old Testament of the works and the New Testament that he's about to unveil, that he's about to create. The Old Testament who goes by works says, he, you guy, you've been performing all these miracles, really. Storage. Why don't you save yourself? You know? It's like they're basically telling Jesus, Gatawo, Gatawo, man, man, I'm sorting an hour, you know? Jesus. Works. Works. They believe in works. They want. <laughs> and then there's this other one, the New Testament believer, who's about to receive something by grace, comes to him in repentance and says, For us, we have sinned, really. For us, we are thugs. I think I've broken in every house in Chitintale, really. They even know me by name. Even mobile phones, ha, mobile phones. I have every iPhone from 114 to 1488. I don't know what phones. He said, like, I have stolen all of them. Me, I have stolen. But Lord, please, you know, this is what grace does. That you accept your sins, you confess and ask for forgiveness. And he's willing. This is what he was introducing on his right hand. This is why he sits on the right hand. He's introducing something on the right hand. But the prophets and the Old Testament, he's, so he's hung in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus is then stabbed. But before he's stabbed, he gives up his spirit. Tell your neighbor, spirit, water, blood. If you read the Bible, it will tell you there are three witnesses. The three that bear witness on earth. There are those, the three that bear witness in heaven are the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It doesn't say Jesus, it says the Word and the Spirit. And on earth, the three that bear witness are the Spirit, the water, and the what? So Jesus is on the cross. He's on the cross. And when all the sins of the world, past, present, and future had been loaded onto him, and they've counted the cost and said, this is going to cost trillion billions or whatever. He says, have you put everything there? Yes. Then he tells his father, in my hand, I commend my spirit to you. He gives up the spirit. He gives up the what? He gives up the first witness in him who is the spirit and he says it is finished remember he had come out of rest to come and rescue man on the seventh day he came out of rest he left his seat in heaven and came down and said let me again help these people so he comes does this this, this creation he did on the cross and when he would finished all the work there he said it is finished because he knew after that moment of being in the flesh everything else was done was victorious why because that is the only thing the devil could hold on to the body. But the body had one problem for the devil. It had the blood of God. But now, okay. So imagine the Kavuyo in hell of Genom Kwati. You can you can send the other one. You go, you go. You go, you go. Ah you go, you go. Oh, man. So it's a problem. It's like even the grave is saying, Good. <laughs> really, did you choose this site? Why here? What are you doing here? It's like, hey, that's the blood of God. The blood of God. It, it, it's, the blood speaks many things. The blood speaks. 
The blood that has, needs no instruction, it speaks. So he goes to hell and he, it was deliberate. People did not know that Jesus went to hell. Jesus actually went to hell and he had to go there because there were people who died before his coming that were waiting and in hope of his coming. That's why waiting in God, God, God does not, he does not forget you. Waiting on God is, there's nobody who waits on God and loses. Even the ones of the Old Testament who are waiting for this Messiah, 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 and he died while they were waiting. He went to meet them and said, hey, I'm the one. Let me walk in here. Come with me. You read your Bible. It will tell you the people who resurrected on that day. Your Bible will tell you. They came out of the graves. They're like, man, tumulabieko, tumulabieko, tumulabieko. We believed God to see the Messiah and we saw him. God kept his word. You will see him. So the devil is now confused. This one has the blood of God. But we want the body. But he could not keep the body. So three days, he, he made captivity what? You are the one who has been arresting. You are the one who has been fault finding. You are the one who has been causing all this cavalry to mankind. Now please give me, give me the keys you took from Adam. Give me the keys. <laughs> hold on. Oh. <laughs> hold, hold. hold on, hold on. Where are the keys? Keys. <laughs> no, we're actually, we're just keeping them for you. We're just keeping them for you. I really didn't have anything I was doing this thing. You know, I had nothing to do with it. Even the grave could not hold him. He just like, oh. Pop. He goes up. Hello. Finished work of creation. And the Bible says, because of what Jesus did, God exalted him. He says, well done. He exalted him and gave him a name above all names because at the name of Jesus, Hello? And man, you people won't believe it. This very Jesus we are talking about says, I have given you. What I have, I have given you. How foolish can we be to reject such a free offer that you have power on earth in heaven. You're joint heirs with Christ. You have to be a special kind of stupid to miss that. Hello? Even the stupid people will make you go, man, no, enough, enough, enough for you to say, you know? Hey. So he goes and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He rests again. And he tells you now you can enter this rest. I've showed you the way of the Lord. That is the way. That's the way. He came from heaven, took off his jersey, entered your chitakataka, walked around. He would also get hungry. You see, he ate all those things. Sometimes he would eat something that has not gone very well. He also has a short call. Because he had to be a man to understand your problem. Hello? Tell your neighbor, Shema. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds, while it still holds, because this is a time when it, you know, that time runs out. You are not going to live beyond 80 plus plus plus. There's a certain time when you now you know what? Let me just go to glory. Yeah? But while you're still breathing in and out, your heart is still witnessing. <laughs> People say the heart is beating. No, the heart witnesses. It's a witness on earth. It's pumping the blood. They are witnesses. Did I tell you that on the cross, the three witnesses were there with Jesus? Who are the three witnesses? Jesus is on the cross. When he gives up his spirit, this soldier, I don't know, I think he was just led by the spirit to come and so that scripture would be fulfilled. He comes and pierces Jesus. What comes out the other two witnesses? Because the spirit he had given up. Now he had two more witnesses. But these two witnesses had to stay on earth so that they deal with you, the soil issues. 
you the dust of the earth had to be laid with. So it had to come out and pour on the ground, not to go in heaven. So water and blood comes out of him. This water just, it may have, for some people it may have been little water, but it is, it is water that was a statement to the earth. And that's why Jesus says, if you want to enter my rest, follow the following. Believe and accept in your heart and be baptized. Enter water witness. Water witness. Be witnessed in the water. Let the water also say, yeah, now, now you're also part of the project. You're also part of the project. You're also part of the project. I'm also here. I'm also here. I'm also part of the project. Be baptized and then receive the spirit. Then you also have the witness of God. This is why I stand here. I stand here because I carry the three. I want you to be the same. If you have not received Christ, don't leave this place today before you receive him. Enter that rest. Enter that rest. Praise the Lord. There are three that bear witness. How many? The spirit, the blood, and the water. Did Jesus fulfill all prophecy? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's why he's given a, a name above all names. Because when he was on earth, he witnessed. When he went to hell, the devil could not hold him. He made captivity what? He made a public spectacle. Public spectacle. Where, whereby everybody... You know, have you ever watched a boxing game? Where all you, some of you are football fans, where you hear a team has scored, you scored 10 0, and you're like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, okay, that's enough. You know, praise the Lord. Let me come back here to the rest. Oh, uh, thank you for that scripture. Thank you. So, therefore, tell your neighbor, therefore. While the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid. When the expression here, let me explain to you the expression of be afraid. means, you know, if, if I gave you something that, say like, you know, Gracia, no, Gracia, your president. Eh? 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 Ha. Do you know you first assess yourself no gamba we yatika we kola chi you know we 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 you assess yourself but it's a glass that is ministering to you in a certain way you know we tereza we ka you you understand so this is what it means let us be what kuba it is there it is available what is still available no gamba chintu chino chitwale vanchi no gamba man but si chitwale lero i'm finished so yeah let us be afraid less any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of reaching it. It is available for us. It's there in your time while you're breathing in and out. While your heart is witnessing. Your heart is witnessing. None of you ever started your heart. And none of you has the ability to stop it. It is a witness. It's there. It has to give. Because your blood is being plumped there. The witness on earth is blood. <laughs> the witness that came out of Jesus is the blood. <laughs> you understand? So that is pumping in you. Tutu, 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 tutu. Some people in judgment. Uh, God, we did not know that God does not exist. It's like, hey, really? The food you ate, how much of it did you supervise to enter where? <laughs> Let me follow it. I follow. But now I think it has reached here. Aha, uh -huh, now it has. You've eaten food. Chips and chaps. Over, over, over chips is against the matu. Over. Do you follow the food? When you eat it, it does its what? Same way when you take the word of God, just take it in and let it do. Let it build you up. Let it do the work. That's what food. Man does not live on bread alone. Your spirit man, that food that you eat, the spirit man depends on that word that goes in there and starts to build, body build you. And now those of you who are spiritual, let me share this with you. Build yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Do you know what it means to build yourself up? Do you know what it means? It means that when you get an opportunity, I'm showing you now quick ways to get and enter into rest, practical ways to enter rest. Can I get a glass or something? I just want to demonstrate something. Anything, any container that I can work with. Um, <clears throat> build yourself up. Build yourself up. Tell your neighbor, Shema. 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 Don't come short of this. We are going to show you. Uh, thank you. God bless you. So we are going to enter rest. Let me use the glass. This may not display. Please bring this up. Bring the glass. I want you to put it where everybody can see. Okay? 
right. So, build yourself up in your most holy faith. How many of you speak in tongues? How many of you speak in tongues? Okay, amen. Listen to me. You do not have all the answers on the earth, but we have been given the mind of Christ. We have been given a witness. That third witness who first goes when Jesus is going to go down. Okay? And, he, and when Jesus was glorified, he gives them to us as a gift. He says, trust me, you will need the Holy Spirit. You, you To do the things I did even more, greater things shall they do. Let me give you the Holy Spirit. So, and what do we do with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, Paul gets the revelation that we should build, our most, we should build ourselves up with the most holy faith by praying in a what? Build and be filled. The Bible uses build, fill. If you are this vessel, this earthen treasure in earthen vessel, being filled means every time you're praying in tongues, you're doing this. Every time you're praying in tongues, you're doing this. Every time you're praying in tongues, you're doing this. This is building you up in your most holy faith. Every time you're praying, this is what is happening. And then there comes a time where rivers of living water flow out of you. They 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 flow out of you. Flow out of you. Rivers, and you bless others. Others are blessed. Because of what you're feeling up here. You're praying in a riba shape of Kurubo Shatan. You're praying, you're praying, you're praying, you're praying. You're getting filled. And as you're getting filled, your overflow blesses other people. You're being blessed and you're being filled. And the more you do this, the more you're entering his rest. The more you do this, the more you're entering his rest. Because your mind starts to now pick a few things that are happening in your earthen vessel. Praise the Lord. You're in a situation where your landlord is throwing you out. Don't, do, don't waste your time crying about a landlord. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Even the landlord will get some water. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build, even school fees will get some of it. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Even this will come to you. Even your body will have to... Because of what is flowing in you, even your body receives certain healings that it doesn't know about. It says... The water is, remember this is a witness three witnesses, three witnesses three witnesses, three witnesses, three witnesses the spirit is already telling you I am helping you in tongues I'm helping you in tongues build yourself up, build your muscle these things, my family, they are bewitching me they are doing this, build yourself up build yourself up build yourself up, when trouble comes build yourself up, my husband left me my children, my this build yourself up because all these things here, when that anointing, when those rivers of living water flow out of you, when they start to flow out of your belly, when they flow out of your belly, things around you start to change. Like now there's water all over the place because things are changing. But I may not be contented. He said instead of getting drunk, be filled with. Take the right drink. Pray. Pray. Pray in the whole. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Enter his rest. Don't, don't be the Christian who used the canoe where others had a motorboat. Hmm? You know, you will all get to a destination, yes? We'll all, we'll all go to glory. But this one will go with painful hands. And the other one says, we had an, my wife is my witness here. Let me share something with you about entering rest. So, <clears throat> when I get the revelation of a wedding, very interesting. It was uh, February 6th. The Lord clearly tells me, and I knew exactly that this is my wife. I was even embarrassed because the whole time I like, I was around her, but I did not quite think that until the Lord told me, that's your wife. I went to her and I repented. I said, I'm sorry. But God had opened my eyes. I repented. I said, I am sorry. I've wasted your time. I've wasted your years. This is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Fast forward. We set a date, 26 June. So 26 June, we were thinking, how is the money going to come from? It's just, this is February, we're talking June. Wedding. It's like, hey, uh, why well, we should just do we shall just do a... You know, we'll find... A, we'll, we'll just go to church, talk to a few people. You know when you're trying to cut corners for God, eh? And he's telling him that's not what I've set you out to do. Hello? The day drew closer, there was absolutely nothing to show that there's anything going to happen. Absolutely nothing. Now let me give you the classic. 
two weeks to the wedding, not even a deposit, nothing, not, not, as in, yes, we knew we were going to get married, but the other things were like, ah, hey, Lord, 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 God, we are not seeing anything. But God has a way when he sees you about to faint, he throws you a small thing there. He throws you something to encourage, to, to make you go back and say, you know, hold on. He threw, he threw another one there. It's like, eh, hey, next thing. Uh, president says, uh, lockdown. The next 21 days. Like, hey. Weddings, we shall only allow 10 people. 10. You remember the stories. Oh, we're like, ha! Huh? My father, Apostle Grace, told me, what more sign are you waiting for? I laughed at myself. I said, yeah, yeah it is God. We went to the, on, that was 10th when the president announced, on the 18th. Because now we're like, we have to, we have more than 20 people. How do we, we you know, by faith we went to Serena Chigo, booked with words. Nice. She's a witness. She's a witness. I even show you receipts. We didn't have money. You understand what I mean? But every time we kept reminding ourselves, thank you, God bless you. We kept reminding ourselves that the just shall live by faith. And if he has spoken, he will fund it. So we continued. We continued. But don't forget the lesson here. The lesson is be filled. Be filled. Build yourself. Be filled and overflow. Be filled and overflow. That is your weapon. Amen. So I'm telling you the story of rest. 18th June, I go to the RDC because those days RDCs are the only ones who give letters, right? So I went to the RDC Makinde and tell him we're having a wedding. He said, ah, wedding? Uh, oh, no. Anyway, let me just give you a letter here. <clears throat> and I said, now what do I do with my guests? But the president said, yeah, the president said, Tenant, we are very strict. That place of Serena has been very stubborn. You know when people talk, talk in their offices and they are all feeling all important. It's people are disturbing a lot. But uh, anyway, let me you pick your letter. Pick the letter. Again, no money. The bride had not yet gotten her uh, gown. There was nothing. Do you understand when I say there is nothing? Some of you don't know when there is nothing. When there is absolutely no evidence. But you are just holding on to God and saying, Lord, you are God. It becomes your drinking water. Lord, you are surely God. God. There's, you look at your account, zero. He said, Lord, you are still God. Lord, you are still God. Amen? Ha -ha. Something happened in the last seven days of the wedding. This is Sunday. We have come from service. Monday. Serena starts calling. Says, are you people serious? Are you still having this wedding on Saturday or what? Says, yes, we are coming. But they deposited. Somebody else wants to take the date. In our head, we said, no. You are not taking <laughs> this God of ours. Let me tell you a very funny story. So, Monday, zero. Tuesday, zero. The wedding is when? God released money on Wednesday. We paid the venue, we paid the food. We paid, we, we, I even went and tried my outfits out. We see, Mugole got her things Wednesday. Now for us, we are sorted. Thursday, we are like, so first hold on. The empirical say, what's the deal? You're like, ha, ah, the kids, now we need outfits. You people, when God starts moving on your part. Eh? I did not have money. I remember I, I, I had a sticker because I work in media. I drove, but I... I'm just saying I'm being led by the spirit. Whatever you lead me, I go. So we say we're looking for shoes. Do you know we almost bought the kids plastic shoes? These, you know those Crocs? You know Crocs? Nigina. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. So someone was even directing us where to go and get them during lockdown. They, we went to, to Mango. There's some shops there. Um, what is that called? Martin Road. Martin Road, there was a place. We get there and they give you blue, yellow, green. You're like, eh. <laughs> like, eh. But in my head, I'm like, but is this really the wedding you want to have? Really, Lord. He says, oh, no, no. Anyway, uh, I just stop for a moment. I ask the spirit to lead me. He's like, what do we do? He says, why don't you go and try Aponye? You know Aponye near the park? Uh, so I just went there and said, at least if we can get one couple of shoes, one, the others will just have to, you know, somehow, there will be attendees. Went there. I'm moving around with a trolley, just believing God. But I just said, you know what? Mean moments of confusion, this is what I do. I speak in. I, I fill myself up. I said, let this water flow on somebody, Razima. I continue. I be moving around with a trolley. You know when you're moving a trolley, and you know you're not really going to buy. But you're, you're, you're just moving around. and people, But people see you and they believe you have, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. It's good when people see you and they assume you're rich. 
yeah it is a good thing it means they, they are seeing the light on you they see the wealth on you never say no me i don't have no you, you said yeah, yeah you're right you're right you're right but you're moving around with the trolley and you know <laughs> you know you are the only one who between you and god you are the ones or segera we move the trolley as i'm moving somebody just bumps into me and says hey roger i've not seen you in a long time I said hey how are you what are you doing here how is lockdown treating you some friend of ours why wait, wait, yeah who works in ministry of finance uh what are you doing he's like uh, no i'm just preparing for a wedding tomorrow hey okay wow congratulations you know you remember you mc at my wedding someone said yes yeah, yeah so you're getting married yes yeah 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 I'm like okay um so he takes me um and he said this very lightly and casually lightly and what casually he said uh okay talks to one of the people there give him everything that he wants just put the tro- you put the trolley at the check in you do not know how the trolley changed how 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 light it became the trolley became light you understand because i was moving at holy spirit fire you know you know that speed that speed of will this one's fit to toilet we shall see they're like how will this one's fit him gula oversize it's okay you know we went this i i put everything in there you know i i just completely and i thought you'd say jako some things after he said how much was it <coughs> just went swiped his card you know where you're moving and you're saying i hope he doesn't say soko komeo <laughs> Eh, first come back here. You, 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 I'm moving the trolley. Uh, you, you, you're like, you're, hey, by the way, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, you go, God really bless you. Bless you. God bless you. So the trolley is moving, and then, hey, wait a minute. He even says, hold on. He says, come with me. He says, okay. He says, we go to the ATM. I follow him. He goes to the ATM. Those of you who know that up on your place, you go up there. There's a bank somewhere at the, uh, was it? It's, it should be back. Is it Absa or something? Now. Anyway, Mutasa Cafero area, they are up there. ATM. Congratulations, enjoy your wedding. You know, you hold money and in your heart you're saying, God. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People, you need to start living that life of rest. You need to enter that place. Don't let us not tell you these stories in heaven. Leave them here and also have stories to tell. But you mean you don't know. No, you don't know. These are the stories. We'll tell John the Baptist. Do you know what it means to pray in tongues? You understand? You need to have stories for heaven. Hello? You otherwise you'll be boring without conversation. Between our testimonies, we overcame him by the power of the what? And the word of our what? And we fear not because. Hello? Hello? So we go. Wedding. You know when you say to yourself, ah, you know, for us we'll go attend our wedding. Eat. You know they pray everything. Go home. <laughs> wedding happened. Um, Apostle Grace was. He prayed over us, blessed our marriage, and then. Ah, we are just now planning how are we going to transport on a on a This one and now ready. The other one, and then you 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 then you catch you by your bad dropping about it. Then they come back for us. Yeah, but we have to end early before before curfew time. You understand? You remember those days? Yeah. While we're still doing all this, <laughs> God, God, we get someone offering all of us rooms at the hotel. Serena, Serena, Serena Chigo, excuse me, Serena Chigo. I, I'm not talking of a Gokul or Samka motel. I'm saying Serena Chigo, Chigo, $250 a night. Eh? <laughs> you understand? Do you know God? <laughs> He who finds a wife and obtains what? These things I have, you know I decided to keep receipts because I knew one day I'll share the story and people will not believe. But I'm saying it so that you know that your situation is not impossible. We got a honeymoon suit. I have a picture somewhere on my phone. Yes, you were given, given a honeymoon suit. We attended to like VIPs. But you know God. But hey God. Do you know that because it was locked down, the hotel was almost to us. Were, you understand what I mean? Where you wake up, go to the balcony, move around, go to the piano room, go to and even even the staff now know you by name because You understand? They know you by name. Praise the Lord. They knew us by name. That is the God I'm talking about. That is rest. That is rest. Now you're thinking those things are there. So one day we're just playing around with scriptures. I like to say playing around. 
because you know for us we like to use the toothpick you pick something pick something so while when 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 the lord says that i'll give you treasures hidden in the dark i kept asking the lord what does this mean what does this mean <laughs> and then he, the holy spirit prompts what's what desire do you have in your heart maybe this year we need to travel Kali, we should have traveled Kali, the, my plan was after the wedding we should have traveled her honeymoon bc, 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 you know you go through that and i banked it but the holy spirit doesn't forget okay someone just came looking for us me and my wife took us to dubai in october this is three months after the wedding we went to dubai we were there for almost five days all expenses paid if I showed you the pictures, you'd think we had a, a we had forty thousand dollars in our wallet, but we had Holy Spirit in our wallet. <laughs> we went to very posh places in Dubai, very posh places. Now and then, <laughs> he, the Holy Spirit reminds you of that very same scripture and says, "You need to remind people." That they should not miss entering his rest. That is what Jesus meant by rest in his peace that transcends all human understanding. It is when they come and give you the worst news that you will realize what it means to have his peace. They will come and tell you of all the people who have been selected for the job, yours was the worst you have been or you have been fired. That Those 10 seconds you have in between there and you receiving that information is where the Holy Spirit tells you, enter. Enter. It's like when you receive bad news, he says, before you react, enter. Come to your father's house. Quickly, young one. And quietly, in your secret place. The beauty about speaking in tongues is that you can even pray without people knowing you're praying in tongues. They just see you moving around. You're like, mm -hmm. With groanings in the spirit. With groanings in the spirit. Your boss is saying, What are you saying? He says, No, I'm not saying anything. You said your name is Malehu? Hey, sorry, I confused your papers. Sorry. You fixed things there. At a time when you should have fainted. Rest is knowing when to dodge the fainting part. When the fainting is about to happen, you say, no. <laughs> Do the mm, groan in the spirit. Mm. Speak in tongues. Fill yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And then before you know it, you hear decisions changing here. You're not, you're just there, there. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I've taken a lot of time. But I hope I have blessed somebody today. Amen. The Bible tells us to get a scripture that you are applying to your life and pin it somewhere on your doorpost. Meditate upon it day and night. Remember this scripture and remember it over and over again. Enter his rest. Enter his rest. When they say rest in peace, they're telling you rest in Jesus. Rest in Jesus. Rest in the finished work at the cross. When he went to the cross, that the grave could not hold him captive. So you know that there's a victory that goes through all the way through the redemption cycle. There's a, there's a vic you're victorious all the way. That's why you're more than conquerors. Because he went there and he said, okay, these men now, let me even do something more interesting. Jesus says, now they are in me and I am in them. But if you could not touch my body, but they are in me. You, you understand what I'm saying? He, he says, they are in me. He says, if you are in me, who says? Jesus says, as long as you are in who? And uh, are you beginning to understand it? His body was untouchable. He is untouchable. He overcame. Now he's telling you, listen, we have a formula already. For you to overcome the world, this very, this very, very, very simple decision you have to make. You accept that me and the Father come. Invite us into your heart. When you invite us, and we put a seal on you with the Holy Spirit then you are part of our original plan of let us make man. You're taking, you're, you're falling back into the original plan. 
That's what the second Adam came for, to correct what the first Adam failed to do. That the first Adam sinned and all of us carried his sin. One man. So there needed to be another Adam who comes and gives up his righteousness to us so that he carries our sin and we are given righteousness. You know when you're born, when you're born again, you're righteous. You're not born into sin, you're born into righteousness. That's what the Bible says. So he's telling you, accept me. I give you. Hey, you're covered. You're, in, you're untouchable. Nothing. The devil will come and try and play things in front of you like this. But you tell him, I do not, I do not walk by sight. I do not walk by what I'm seeing. I know what I am on the inside. If my boss comes and disorganizes me, if my boss does anything, I deal with him in spirit. Praise the Lord. God bless you. So if you're here today, maybe you just came as a visitor. You're escorting somebody. Listen. Don't miss the opportunity. Ah, there is a scripture. Beautiful. I in them and you in me in order that they may become one and perfectly united that the world may know and recognize that you sent me and you have loved them even as you have loved me. Amen? So, please, don't it, it will take time for you to start to see some of these things, but remember Jesus says his word is a seed, right? It is a seed. So don't be an impatient farmer. Tell your neighbor, don't be impatient. Don't plant beans today and tomorrow you're checking on the ground. Like no one, we planted beans. No, no, don't be impatient. Plant the seed, let it do its work. Do you know everything created worships God? Do you know what happens to plants just as proof and testimony? Let me tell you, the earth witnesses and tells us about God every day. The earth is always preaching to us. You plant a seed, guess what happens? You get a bean seed. God bless you. You get a bean seed, let me tell you. Let me tell you what happens. The seed gets into the soil. It has to die because it wants to come back and multiply itself. So when the seed comes out, those of you who are doing science, biology, you know what happens in biology when it dies what happens the seed starts to look for light it shoots breaks open breaks its grave open and it comes out and it is worshipping the bean seed comes out with its leaves and as it grows continue growing it raises its hands to the light even plants worship but this was a different kind of seed it went in and on the third day it came out and gave birth to the church and as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. We are the fruit that God multiplied. When it says be fruitful and multiply, he has multiplied us for sure. So if you have never given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity for you to come and receive that free gift while while the promise of entering his rest still holds. It still holds. There's a day when it will say, okay, that's it. Put up your hand. Put up your hand if you'd like to. If you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. you like to get, put up your hand. If you want to accept Jesus. You want to accept, you want, okay, I'm, I'm sure there's some who just put up their hand because I said put up your hand. But if you want to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, raise your hand, please. Amen. And in the same way, I want you to come here. Come forward. Come forward. Listen, I was delivered from powers of darkness because I had not understood this revelation, great revelation of God. But I thank God. Come stand this side. Come stand this side. Yes. Stand with me. Amen. Amen. You want to give your life to Christ? Please come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I thank God that you came out today. I thank God that you came out today. Because every blessing that I'm going to speak upon your lives starts effective immediately. Okay? Every blessing. Who's Margaret? Margaret. 
where are you Margaret? Is there Margaret? Put up your hand if you're here. Maggie? Mega. The people would cut their name short when I hear Margaret. Where is Margaret? Maggie? Is she here? You're coming to get saved as well. Amen. <laughs> Do you know that of the people standing here, none will ever struggle with school fees again? They are going to go into a debt free zone because they have chosen today to enter his rest. That you're going to become pillars in your homes. When they say pillar, you are the person who's going to change your household. God is going to use you mightily to change your household. Amen. I'm expecting two more people. I'm expecting two more people. I've seen you in the spirit come here. Yes. There's a second one. There's a second one. There you go. So who's Margaret? When, when I come to stand before you to minister, I am not, I'm not functioning on my own. I've just come here as an ambassador and as a witness. We're here to witness. We're here to witness. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me. Of all the decisions you'll ever made in your life, this is the biggest and this is the greatest miracle under heaven. Raising a person from the dead is not the greatest miracle because even Lazarus was raised right from the dead, but at some point in his life he had to die again, right? But being born again is eternal. This is why it's called the biggest miracle. What you're receiving is eternal. Even if whatever the enemy tries to do after this, he cannot take away life from you. Your life goes and you, have, you are going to permit God to take your life into his hands. And nobody can snatch anything out of God's hand. <laughs> You'll have to be a special fool to tr even try and think about it. Hello? I want you to put your hand in your chest. Put your hand in your chest. A lot has been happening in your life. And you've been looking for answers wondering, God, really, God, if you're really there, show me a sign. Do this. And God caused whoever has led you to come here. Maybe it was a, it was a poster you saw. Maybe somebody shared with you a message on the phone. Maybe you just escorted someone because you're like, ah, let me look for a, something to do this afternoon. But God was setting you up for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. Listen to me. Let's pray and then I, I, I pray. I prophesy over you. Hand in the chest, say, Father in heaven, I thank you for today because I have heard for sure that you have purchased something precious for me. Today, I come to you as a sinner asking for forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my life and be Lord. Come and take full control of my life. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Today, the old is gone. I'm a new man. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I've been born into your kingdom. Jesus is my Lord. My name is written in the book of life. And I'll live forever with him. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now those of you who have come forward here. I want you. Derek. Who's Derek? 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 I've asked for Margaret. I've asked for Derek. If you know them, if they are, they are going for a short call or anything, whatever, just tell them to come back here. This is their moment. You have to be in the right place at the right time. There are certain things which you receive when you are in the right place and at the right time. 